G'day YouTube, welcome to this episode of Dave's RC Garage. Today I'm going to start building the TTO2. So let's get into it. Now, this first page, after the tools you need to assemble it, next page shows you different wheel bases and heights. This car can be adjusted for different body shells and different running styles. It'll tell you in your body set what sort of style to make it up. So just have a look at your body instructions and it will tell you, but generally most standard cars are the full length chassis, uh, normal race height, standard height. Alright, so let's start. Page 1. Now you see, it says up here A. That refers to the um, bag of screws that you'll be using. And then the actual number on the part, it says C5, refers to the tree. And you can find these if you're not sure at the back. So there's C, and it's all the drive shafts. So it's just a quick reference if you want to, if you're not sure where you're looking at. Uh, I know I'll need bag A, it's in the screw bag here for the rest. I will need the gears, they'll stay out, and as the instructions said, I'll need bag A. There are all the screws from bag A. Make sure we'll wait because I know they're for the diffs, so we'll leave them in there. In the gear bag, we have Gear. We will also need drive shafts. We will need C5, which is these ones. Okay, in the gear bag, we we'll also need this little fellow to retain the, the drive pin. You can see, even though the side cutters do do a good job, there will be just a little bit of flashing on the edge there. Gently take it off, not taking off any extra, just so everything runs nice and smooth. Okay, out of bag A, we'll also need this bag is needed. Dry pin. Also get out the first of the option parts that we get used on this car, the ball bearing set. If you're just going to assemble your car as pretty much a shelf queen, you won't have to worry about these. If you're going to actually run it, definitely, definitely buy a bearing set and put it in at the start. That way, you also don't need grease. Because these run nice and smooth. So we have the bearing on there, the cup holder, if you look along, there is a spot where it will go and sit in. Then Spurgy pushes in, if it's right it'll go up nice and flush, there's no gap there. We then get 
another 1150 bearing and one gear that's the first part done now next step I need to get the other one is the same, the other C5. We also need the drive shaft. Check this one. might seem finicky taking all these tiny bits of plastic off but it will ensure you have a nice smooth running model all right so for this this one will be the last of our 1150 bearings there are two small bearings in here 1050s and 1150s the 1050s go into the uh, wheels into the hubs the 1150s are used for this drivetrain so, Put two 1150s on there. And your other bevel pinion gear, as they call it. The bearings get spread out on that shaft to the ends. And then insert a dry shaft in one and two. There's your center drive shaft complete. Now we need our main chassis. All we do is line everything up. So it sits in there nice and smooth. And we use part D2, which is over in this part three. Let's give that a clean up. And that goes to secure down the front drive shaft with two 3x10s, which are your standard size silver screws. You'll see there's a lot of these in the kit. As the instructions say, I'm going to use the new one I've got a, to me, Reese already had opened. Need a bit of grease around your pinions, bevel gears. And we can get to the spur gear later. That's first page done. Alright, this can go aside for the minute, because now we're actually on to the diffs. So we have to make two of these. So for the front and rear, one for the front, one for the rear. All the parts are already in our gear bag that we've opened. There's them. And the rest are on this tree here. So I'll just clean up and get these all off the tree. And then we'll continue. Okay, so I've checked the rest of them. The easiest way is just to use your finger to feel where there's any rough spots, any flashing left. Okay. Now the rest is just a matter of um, assembling step by step. First take one of your cross pieces, this is also on the plastic tree that we just took the gears off. Put some grease on first. Make sure your bevel gears have something to um, lubricate them on the inside. Not only that, the grease will also hold the gears on there so they just don't go falling off 
when you're trying to assemble it. All right. and then take your bottom cup, drop one of these gears in. Good bit of grease and then line up the four pins with the markings there give it a bit of spin to make sure it drops all the way into place and give it another bit of grease there put your top one on and just make sure that you've got the holes lined up with the holes in the, the um, counter gear. Right. This is when you need your smaller screwdriver. For these small silver screws. One done. Okay, so two differentials built. And bring back in our chassis. We need the four. Uh, what are these? Twelve eighty bearings. And the front one will go in this side. So we need our gear cover, which is on this part's tree. So again, another four of our standard 3x10 screws. Okay, next part we need is A2, which is on the same tree that the diff cover was on. And here from the snap, these are quite hard plastics. That's where you need a good set of side cutters, because if you try breaking them off, sometimes they'll snap off nice and clean, sometimes you'll be left with a huge dag that'll get in the way of everything. So this goes on that way. Okay, that's that part done. Next bit, we need our first of our arms. Uh, we're gonna be getting this one now. So we want the upper arm, which is this one. Want both of them off the two trees. Uh, we also want a shock tower. This step we're also going to need P7, which is in the steering servo set. A little parts you can hear rattling around in there. Which is these little black balls with a slit in them. You can see. I don't know how to see on camera, but there's a there's a little cut in one side. Now we do, once we've cleaned up our upper arms where we cut it off. There'll be a bunch of safety people going, oh, don't cut towards yourself, don't cut towards yourself. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. Um, I just know how to put the plastic cuts. And that, so for yourself, yeah, cut away from yourself. All right, so what you do with these, put one of the, the balls in sideways, just press it and turn it. And then the other side, put the ball in long ways, click it down, turn it sideways. Now, the arms are universal left and right, but all you have to worry about is that this, just as it gets in the way, this lug on the back goes towards the back of the, the arm, 
so the towards in the inside of the chassis. So we've got our mount here. We want it to go that way. So also recommends to put a bit of grease on, which I'll do now. Both arms, other one, other way around. So the this part's at the back. Alright, so this goes on, this requires a bit of fiddling maybe. Oh no, there it goes. It slipped on very easily. Another pair of 3x10s screws. The front two holes where it mounts. Might want to put a little bit of grease on these just so they cut into the plastic easier that first time. Okay, I think that'll do it for this episode. Tune in next time to see the build continued.